Preface of Odes and Sonnets, written by Clark Ashton Smith. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Amy Graymore. Odes and Sonnets by Clark Ashton Smith. Preface. The tendency of modern poetry is against it, and the gaunt muse of these lonesome latter years stammers with a greater facility than marks her singing. So many, however, are congenitally opaque to the soul and inner light of song, and hence able to view it from only an intellectual standpoint, that she does not lack followers of her shambling progress. Those devotees of austerity will find little to appeal to them in the rich and spacious poems here presented. In fact, an even partial use of the intelligence that is their one asset will cause them to shrink from the stern conclusions involved in some of the passages of this book, to turn from its terrible vistas. Clark Ashton Smith is unlikely to be afflicted with present-day popularity. Nevertheless, one will find in the sheer imagination of the succeeding pages evidence and proof of a precocity vast and sublime in its range, and quite unequalled in English verse. For the greatest of these poems, most of them indeed, were written before their author had attained the age of twenty. At that age, Pope had a certain hard cleverness, little more, and Rossetti had written, though not perfected, the beautiful Blessed Damsel. But imagine either of them writing a thing at once so amazingly mature and imaginative as Nero. It is unthinkable. Chatterton is commonly held up as the criterion of literary precocity, yet he was, for all his strong personality, a babbling babe compared to Smith, so far as poetry is concerned. In fact, his poems are mere verse and not poetry, while in the pages that follow the discerner of pure gold will find it in heavy veins. Beside it, I can imagine nothing more ephemeral than the aridities and extravagances of free verse. In the new treason to beauty, Clark Smith has had no hand. Let us be grateful for that, as the years to come will be grateful, and let California be proud that such a phenomenon exists within her borders. George Sterling, Bohemian Club, April 17, 1918 End of Preface Nero, from Odes and Sonnets by Clark Ashton Smith, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. This Rome that was the toil of many men, the consummation of laborious years, fulfillment's crown to visions of the dead, an image of the wide desire of kings, is made my darkling dreams effulgency fuel of vision, brief embodiment of wandering will, and wastage of the strong, fierce ecstasy of one tremendous hour, when ages piled on ages were aflame to all the years behind and years to be. Yet any sunset were as much as this, save for the music forced by hands of fire from out the hard, straight silences which bind dull matter's tongueless mouth, a music pierced with the tense voice of life, more quick to cry its agony, and save that I believe the radiance redder for the blood of men. Destruction hastes and intensifies, the process that is beauty manifests ranges of form unknown before, and gives motion and voice and hue where otherwise bleak inexpressiveness had leveled all. If one create, there is the lengthy toil, the labored years and days league toward an end, lest the measure of desire may hap after the sure consuming of all strength and strain of faculties that otherwhere were loosed upon enjoyment, and at last remains to one capacity nor power for pleasure in the thing that he hath made. But on destruction hangs but little use of time or faculty, but all is turned to the one purpose, unobstructed, pure, of sensuous rapture and observant joy, and from the intensities of death and ruin one draws a heightened and completer life, and both extends and vindicates himself. 
I would I were a god with all the scope of attributes that are the essential core of Godhead, and its visibility. I am but emperor, and hold a while the power to hasten death upon its way, and cry a halt to worn and lagging life for others, but for mine own self may not delay the one nor bid the other speed. There have been many kings, and they are dead, and have no power in death save the wind confers upon their blown brainless dust to vex the eyeballs of posterity. But were I God, I would be overloader of many kings, and were as breath to guide their dust of destiny. And were I God, exempt from this mortality which clogs perception and clear exercise of will, what rapture it would be, if but to watch destruction crouching at the back of time, the tongueless dooms which dog the travelling suns, the vampire silence at the breast of worlds, fire without light that gnaws the base of things, and leth's mounting tide that rots the stone of fundamental spheres, this were enough till such time as the dazzled wings of will came up with power's accession scarcely felt for very suddenness. Then I would urge the strong contention and conflicting might of chaos and creation, matching them those immemorial powers inimical, and all their stars and gulfs subservient, dynasts of time and anarchs of the dark, in closer war reverseless, and would set new discord at the universal core, a Samson principle to bring it down in one magnificence of ruin. Yea, the monster chaos were mine unleashed hound, and all my power destruction's own right arm. I would exult to mark the smouldering stars, renew beneath my breath their elder fire, and feed upon themselves to nothingness. The might of suns, slow-paced with swinging weight of myriad worlds, were made at my desire one long rapidity of roaring light, through which the voice of life were audible and singing of immemorial dead, whose dust is loosened in vaporous wings with soaring rack of systems ruinous, and were I weary of the glare of these, I would tear out the eyes of light and stand above a chaos of extinguished suns that crowd and grind and shiver thunderously, lending vast voice and motion but no ray to the stretched silence of the blinded gulfs. Thus would I give my Godhead space and speech for its assertion and thus pleasure it, hastening the feet of time with cast of worlds like careless pebbles or with shattered suns, brightening the aspect of eternity. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ode to the Abyss From Odes and Sonnets by Clark Ashton Smith Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer O many gulfed unalterable one whose deep sustains far drifting world and sun thou wast ere ever star put out on thee and thou shalt be when never world remains when all the sun's triumphant strength and pride is sunk in voidness absolute and their majestic music wide in vaster silence rendered mute and though god's will were night to dusk the blue and law to cancel and disperse the tangled tissues of the universe and mould the suns anew his might were impotent to conquer thee o indivisible infinity thy darks subdue all light that treads thee down a space exulting o'er thy deeps the cycles die and lo thy darkness reaps the flame of mightiest stars in aeon implicating wars thou tearest planets from their place worlds granite spined to thine erodents yield their treasures centrally confined in crypts 
by continental pillars sealed what suns and worlds have been thy prey through unhorizoned reaches of the past what spheres that now essay time's undimensioned vast shall plunge forgotten to thy gloom at length with life that cried its query of the night to ears with silence filled what worlds unborn shall dare thy strength girt by a sun's unwearied might and dip to darkness when the sun is stilled o incontestable abyss what light in thine embrace of darkness sleeps what blaze of a side real multitude no peopled world is left to miss what motion is at rest within thy deeps what gyres of planets long become thy food worlds unconstrainable that plunged therein to peace like tempest-worn and crew forsaken ships and suns that fell to huge and ultimate eclipse and lasting gyre release what sound thy gulfs of silence hold stupendous thunder of the meeting stars and crash of orbits that diverged with life's thin song are merged thy quietudes enfold pain and threnody as one and battle blare of unremembered wars with festal songs sung in the roams of ruined spheres and music that belongs to younger undiscoverable years with words of yesterday ah who may stay thy soundless world devouring tide o thou whose hands pluck out the light of stars are worlds but as a fruit for thee may no sufficient bars nor marks inveterate abide to baffle thy persistency still and unstriving now what plottest thou within thy universe ulterior deeps dark as the final lull of suns what new advancement of the night on citadels of stars around whose might thy slow encroachment runs and crouching silence thunder potent sleeps end of poem this recording is in the public domain to the darkness from odes and sonnets by clark ashton smith read for librivox dot org by anusha ayer thou hast taken the light of many suns and they are sealed in the prison house of gloom even as candle flames hast thou taken the souls of men with winds from out a hollow place they are hid in the abyss as in a sea and the gulls are over them as the weight of many peaks as the depth of many seas thy shields are between them and the light they are past its burden and bitterness the spears of the day shall not touch them the chains of the sun shall not hail them forth many men there were in the days that are now of thy realm that thou hast sealed with the seal of many deeps their feet were as eagles wings in the quest of truth ay mightily they desired her face hunting her through the lands of life as men in the blankness of the waste that seek for a buried treasure house of kings but against them were the veils that hands may not rend nor sabers pierce and truth was withheld from them as a water that is seen afar at dawn and at noon is lost in the sand before the feet of the traveller the world was a barrenness and the gardens were as the waste and they turned them to the adventure of the dark to the travelling of the land without roads to the sailing of the sea that hath no beacons why have they not returned their quest hath found end in thee or surely they had fared once more to the place whence they came as men that have travelled to a fruitless land they have looked on thy face and to them it is the countenance of truth thy silence is sweeter to them than the voice of love thine embrace more dear than the clasp of the beloved they are fed with the emptiness past the veil and their hunger is filled they have found the waters of peace and are athirst no more they know a rest that is deeper than the gulfs and whose seal is unbreakable as the seal of the void 
they sleep the sleep of the suns and the vast is a garment unto them end of poem this recording is in the public domain the retribution from odes and sonnets by clark ashton smith read for LibriVox.org by anusha ayer old egypt's gods osiris ammon thoth came on my dream in thunder and their feet revealed were as the leaven's fire and heat the hosts of rome the arab and the goth have left their altars dark yet stern and wroth in olden power they stood whose wings were fleet and mighty as with strength of storms that meet in mingled foam of clouds and ocean froth above my dream with arch of dreaded wings in judgment and in sentence of what crime i know not sate the gods outcast of time they passed and lo a plague of darkness fell unsleeping and accursed with nameless things and dreams that stood the ministers of hell end of poem this recording is in the public domain satan unrepentant from odes and sonnets by clark ashton smith read for LibriVox.org by anusha ayer lost from those archangelic thrones that star fadeless and fixed heaven's light of azure bliss rejected of his splendour and depressed beyond the birth of the first sun and lower than the last star's decline i here endure abased majestic fallen beautiful and unregretful in the doubted dark throneless that greatens chaos ward albeit from chanting stars that throng the nave of night lost echoes wander here and of his praise with ringing moons for symbols dinned afar and shouted from the flaming mouths of suns the shadows of impalpable blank deeps deep upon deep accumulate close down around my head concentred while above in the lit loftier blue star after star spins endless orbits betwixt me and heaven and at my feet mysterious chaos breaks abrupt immeasurable round his throne now throbs the rhythmic resonance of suns incessant perfect music infinite i throneless hear the discords of the dark and roar of ruin uncreate than which some vast cacophony of dragons heard in wasted worlds were purer melody the universe his tyranny constrains turns on in old and consummated gulfs the stars that wield his judgment wait at hand and in new deeps apocalyptic suns prepare his coming lo his mighty whim to make and mar goes forth enormously in nights and constellations darkness hears enraged suns that bellow down the deep god's ravenous and insatiable will and he is strong with change and rideth forth in whirlwind clothed with thunders and with doom to the red stars god's throne is reared of change its myriad and successive hands support like music his omnipotence that fails if mercy or if justice interrupt the sequence of that tyranny begun upon injustice and doomed evermore to stand thereby i who with will not less than his but lesser strength opposed to him this unsubmissive brow and lifted mind he holds remote in nullity and night doubtful between old chaos and the deeps betrayed by time to vassalage methinks all tyrants fear whom they may not destroy and i that am of essence one with his though less in measure he may not destroy and but withstands in gulfs of dark suspense a secret dread forever
for god knows this quiet will irrevocably set against his own and this mine old revolt yet stubborn and confirmed eternally and with the hatred born of fear and fed ever thereby god hates me and his gaze sees the bright menace of mine eyes afar through midnight and the innumerable blaze of servile suns lo strong in tyranny the despot trembles that i stand opposed for fain am i to hush the anguished cries of substance broken on the racks of change of matter tortured into life and god knowing this dreads evermore some huge mishap that in the vigils of omnipotence once careless i shall enter heaven or he himself with weight of some unwonted act thoughtless perturb his balanced tyranny to mine advance of watchful aspiration with rumoured thunder and enormous groan burden of sound that heavens overborne let slip from deep to deep even to this where climb the huge cacophonies of chaos god's universe moves on confirmed in pride in patient majesty serene and strong i wait the dreamt inevitable hour fulfilled of orbits ultimate when god whether through his mischance or mine own deed or rise of other and extremer strength shall vanish and the lightened universe no more remember him than silence does an ancient thunder i know not if these mine all indomitable eyes shall see a maimed and dwindled godhead cast among the stars of his creating and beneath the unnumbered rush of swift and shining feet trodden into night or mark the fiery breath of his infuriate sons blaze forth upon and scorch that coarsened essence or his flame drawn through the windy halls of nothingness a mightier comet roar and redden down potentous unto chaos i but wait in strong majestic patience equable that hour of consummation and of doom of justice and rebellion justified end of poem this recording is in the public domain alexandrines from odes and sonnets by clark ashton smith read for LibriVox.org. knowing the weariness of dreams and days and nights the great and grievous vanity of joy and pain frail loves that pass where languors infinite remain fervors and long despairs and desperate brief delights knowing how in the witless brains of them that were the drowsy wiving worm hath prospered and hath died knowing that evermore by moon and sun abide the standing glooms made stagnant in the sepulchre knowing the vacillant leaves that tremble flame and fall the sweetly wasting rose the dawns and stars that wane knowing these things the desolate heart and soul are fain of the one perfect sleep which filleth foldeth all End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Exotique from Odes and Sonnets by Clark Ashton Smith. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Thy mouth is like a crimson orchid flower, whence perfume and whence poison rise unseen to moons a swim in iris or in green or mix with morning in an eastern bower thou shouldst have known in amaranthine isles the sunsets hued like fire of frankincense or the long noons and fraught with redolence the mingled spicery of purple miles thy breasts where blood and molten marble flow thy warm white limbs thy loins of tropic snow these these by which desire is grown divine were made for dreams in mystic palaces for love and sleep and slow voluptuousness and summer seas of foam like foaming wine 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ave Atke Vale from Poems and Sonnets by Clark Ashton Smith. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Black Dreams The pale and sorrowful desire Whose eyes have looked on Lethe And have seen deep in the sliding ebon tide serene Their own vain light inverted Ashen fire with wasted lilies Late and languishing Autumnal roses blind with rain Slow foam from desert sinking seas With honeycomb of aconite and poppy these I bring, with my bitter, barren love to thee. And from the grievous springs of memory, far in the great Maremma of my heart, I proffer thee to drink, and on thy mouth, with the one kiss wherein we met in part, leave fire and dust from quenchless leagues of drouth. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Ministers of Law From Odes and Sonnets by Clark Ashton Smith Read for LibriVox.org The glories and the perils of thy day are one, O man. Thou goest to thine end, with powers and for a little thou dost wend, with marshalled majesties upon their way. But thee the dread necessities betray, That nurse and fearful splendors that befriend, And thee shall alien dominations rend. Deemest the triumph of the worlds to stay, Or step by step eternal, unsurpassed, Stride with the suns upon their road of awe? Thou travelest brief ways that end and sink, Urged by the hurrying planets and the vast, Prone rushing constellations of the law, Thunder and press behind thee at the brink. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Refuge of Beauty From Odes and Sonnets By Clark Ashton Smith Read for LibriVox.org By Anusha Ayer From regions of the sun's half-dreamt decay All day the cruel rain strikes darkly down and from the night thy fatal stars shall frown. Beauty, wilt thou abide this night and day? Roofless at portals dark and desperate, wilt thou a shelter unrefused implore? And, past the tomb's too hospitable door, evade thy lover in eluding hate? Alas, for what have I to offer thee? Chill halls of mind, dank rooms of memory, where thou shalt dwell with woes and thoughts infirm. This rumour thronged citadel of sense, trembling before some nameless imminence, and fellow guestship with the glutless worm. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Crucifixion of Eros from Odes and Sonnets by Clark Ashton Smith Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer Because of thee a mortal love hath died, Because thy willful heart will not believe, Thy hands and mine a thorny crown must weave, A thorny crown for love the crucified. Behold, how beautiful the limbs that bleed, The limbs that bleed, O stubborn heart, for us, Still are the lids so softly tremulous And mute the mouth of our eternal need. Though this thy fearful lips would now deny, Love is divine and cannot wholly die. Draw forth the nails thy tender hands have driven, And we will know the mercy infinite, Will find redemption in our own delight, And in each other's heart the only heaven. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Harlot of the World From Odes and Sonnets by Clark Ashton Smith 
Read for LibriVox.org. O life, thou harlot who beguilest all, Beautiful in thy house, the gorgeous world, Abidest thou, where powers pinion furled, And flying splendors follow to thy call. Innumerous like the stars, or like the dust, Nations and monarchs were thy thralls of yore, Until the grave's old womb forevermore Hast thou betrayed the passion and the lust. Fair as the moon of summer is thy face, And mystical with cloudiness of hair, only an eye, so bornless by delight, Shall find within thy phosphorescent gaze Those caverns of corruption and despair Where the worm toileth in the charnel night. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Belated Love from Odes and Sonnets by Clark Ashton Smith Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer ah woe is me for love hath lain asleep hath lain too long in some morphean close till on his dreaming wings the ruined rose fell lightly and the rose-red leaves were deep alas alas for love is over late far wandering alone we know not where he found the white and purple poppies fair nor heard the summer pass importunate Ah, love, can we forgive thy loitering? The golden summer, as a dream forgone, is changed, Till in our eyes the ashen dawn of autumn kindles. We have heard thy wing, but with a sound of sighing, Heart on heart, in our own sighs, we hear thy wing depart. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Medusa of Despair From Odes and Sonnets by Clark Ashton Smith Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer I may not mask forever with the grace Of woven flowers thine eyes of staring stone Ere fatally I front thee, fully known The guarded horror of thy haggard face Thy visage carven from the heart long dead Of some white frozen star Ere thou astound my life to thine own likeness and confound, Depart, and curse more kindred things instead. Triumphant, through what realms of elder doom, Where even the swart vans of time are stunned, Seek thou some fit Cimmerian citadel, And mighty cities, desolate, unsunned, Whose walls of horrent and enormous gloom Make sharp the horizon of the light of hell. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Memnon at Midnight From Odes and Sonnets by Clark Ashton Smith Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer Dedicated to Mr. Albert M. Bender Methought upon the tomb-encumbered shore I stood of Egypt's lone monarchal stream And saw immortal Memnon Throned supreme in gloom As of that Memphian night of yore. Fold upon fold purpureal he wore Beneath the star-born canopy extreme, Carven of silence and colossal dream Where waters flowed like sleep forevermore. Lo, in the darkness, thick with dust of years, How many a ghostly god around his throne, With thronging winds that were forgotten fames, Stood, ere the dawn restore to ancient ears The long withholden thunder of their names, And music stilled to monumental stone. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of Odes and Sonnets by Clark Ashton Smith